Yes, we're in Matthew chapter 12. We're going to begin at the ninth verse. Matthew chapter 12, verse 9. And when he was departing thence, he went into their synagogue. And behold, there was a man which had his hand withered. And they asked him, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath days that they might accuse him? And he said unto them, What man shall there be among you? that shall have one sheep, and if it fall into a pit on the Sabbath day, will he not lay hold on it and lift it out? How much then is a man better than a sheep? Mm -hmm. Wherefore, it is lawful to do well on the Sabbath days. Mm -hmm. Then saith he to the man, Stretch forth thine hand. And he stretched it forth, and it was restored whole like as the other. Woo. Then the Pharisees went out and held a council against him, how they might destroy him. Mm. But when Jesus knew it, he withdrew himself from thence, and great multitudes followed him, and he healed them all, and charged them that they should not make him known, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Behold my servant whom I have chosen, my beloved in whom my soul is well pleased, I will put my spirit upon him, and he shall shew judgment to the Gentiles. Yes. And, excuse me, he shall not strive nor cry, neither shall any man hear his voice in the streets. A bruised reed shall he not break, and smoking flax shall he not quench, till he send forth judgment unto victory. And in his name shall the Gentiles trust. Then was brought unto him one possessed with the devil, blind and dumb, and he healed him, insomuch that the blind and the dumb both spake and saw. And all the people were amazed and said, Is not this the son of David? Now if we turn to Matthew 5, we're going to look at verse number 16. Matthew chapter 5, verse number 16. Let's read it together. Matthew 5, 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Matthew 5, 16. Amen. Minister Hikers, would you pray for the message and messenger today? Father, we just thank you for your presence. Thank you, Lord. Father God, we thank you for the Holy Spirit ministering. We thank you for the healing that you're going to do on the hearts today. And Father, let the pastor have an anointing from the top of his head the soles of his feet, that double anointed spirit, Father, coming from you. And Father, we thank you for what you're going to do for us today through him. And Father, we just thank you for the word in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And everyone said, Amen. 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 You may be here today. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. When you enter into the house of the Lord, you should anticipate what God has for you. The blessing, the miracle, the answer to prayer, the breakthrough, you should anticipate what the Lord has for you. And when you leave the house of the Lord, you should have received the answer that you sought God for. You say, well, sometimes what I need is not going to happen right then. Saints, I'm telling you that when you walk in anticipating, you walk out thinking, you have it. Mm -hmm. It's in the praise, it's in the exaltation of the Lord that the answer is realized. The devil wants you to think that you have no purpose. That your life has no meaning. That your future is empty. That when you're dead, that's it. Everything's done. There's nothing after that. No way. And whatever you're doing here is just a matter of spinning your wheels and going through the routine, and then it's over. No Since you were created for significance, yes. Amen. that significance is tied into the very plan and heart of God for you and for your life. For your life. This is the first in the series created for significance. The message today, what's my purpose? It's kind of interesting, I think about people in stages of life. It's not uncommon for little children to say to mommy and daddy, where did I come from? Why am I here? 
and mommy and daddy give them an answer and they're okay for a little bit. <laughs> then they get into their teens and they come back with the same question. What am I here for? All right. And they get a little bit deeper answer from mom and dad. Then they get into their young adult years and it starts all over again. Why am I here? What's my purpose? And then something kooky happens. It happens again sometime around the 40s. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Some call it a midlife crisis. The only reason there's a crisis is when they're not grounded on the foundation of Jesus Christ. Amen. Yes. Amen. See, it's only when you know who you are in Christ and your purpose in Him that your life has worth and meaning. We all have purpose. We all have worth and meaning. But there's one thing to know that you have it and another thing to possess it. Okay. Amen. Amen. Amen? Amen. How you live, what you do, and what you say matters. Uh -oh. You were created to glorify the Lord. Amen. See, if we get our purpose all mixed up with what the world says is purposeful, we miss the very reason that God gave us breath. Amen. Live a life that glorifies the Father by doing God's will. Live a life that glorifies the Father by doing God's will. Yes. Number one, speak yes. breakthrough. Yes. Now, saints, you need to do this for you. You need to do this for family members. You need to do this for friends. You need to do this for co-workers and, and, and people at school. You need to do it for the people around you and glorify the King. Matthew 12, 13 says, Then saith he to the man, Stretch forth thine hand. Yes. Mm -hmm. And he walked out of the synagogue with his head hung low, not receiving what God had said. <laughs> right? That's what it says, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Is that how we act sometimes? Yep. God told us what he's done, and we act like it didn't happen for us. <laughs> it's not good enough. God's word didn't work this time. Now let me read it the way it's written. Then said he to the man, stretch forth thine hand, and he stretched it forth, and it was restored yes. whole, like as the other, Matthew 12, 13. Yeah. Praise God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did you know that God wanted the man healed? Yes. yes. Did you know that Jesus knew that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know that God wants to bless you? Amen. Amen. Do you know that God knows that? We need to agree with what God wants. Yes. We need to speak the breakthrough in our lives. The ministry and teachings of Jesus Christ consisted not only of things he said, but also of the things he did. Mm -hmm. His life was a living testimony of God working through him. Amen. John 14, 11, Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works sake. You need to believe that I'm in Dad, and Dad is in me. But if you're having trouble with understanding that, then just believe I am who I am because of the things that I'm doing. Are you doing the kind of things that people know you're a Christian? All right. That you're sold out for God? Yes. That around you, lives are being touched and hearts are being changed because God's Spirit is working through you to bless them. Jesus responded to the needs of the people with the power of love. And that makes a lasting impression. The Scriptures give us many accounts of His miracles. And in some places, the writers simply say, he healed them all. It doesn't list for pages and chapters and books every single miracle that was performed. It just says, and he healed them all. Yes. Amen. In John 21, 25, it says, and there are also many other things which Jesus did. That's right. The which, if they should be written every one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. Amen. Amen. Wow. What a statement. Amen. John, under the anointing of the Holy Ghost, says there's a whole lot of things Jesus did, yes, he did. that wasn't written down. That's right. Amen. And I suppose that if they were, even the world itself.
itself could not contain the books. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, could it be, maybe, that the things he did and the things he's doing amount more to a lot, a lot more than what we give him credit for? Yes. <laughs> the scriptures tell of multitudes of sick people who are healed by Jesus. It says mm -hmm. in Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and the power went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Hmm. Saints, if you're going to do the work God wants you to do, you've got to have God with you. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. And like I was sharing last week, it'd be really good if you had God's Spirit in you. Mm -hmm. Makes things flow a little bit better. Amen. 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 It's not moving by our, by our ideas or our thoughts or our anticipations, but instead by, by the Holy Spirit and the written word of God. Matthew 4, 23, and Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. Yes. In our text, Jesus is in the synagogue. There's a man in the middle of the synagogue with a withered arm. And the Pharisees say, is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath days or no? Tempting him. Imagine for a moment that you're the man with the withered arm. Mm -hmm. Imagine that you have been drugged into the center of the synagogue because they know Jesus is going to be there. Because it says he went into the synagogue. Because, see, under traditional law, people that were lame, maimed, blind, had an infirmity, the list is huge, they weren't allowed in the synagogue. That's right. They had to stay outside. The man that was lame on his feet was outside the door, outside the tabernacle. That was tradition. That was not God's law. That was tradition. So for him to be allowed inside, at first he's thinking, Oh, wow, they're, they're letting me in. And then you hear the question, okay, Jesus, is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath days or no? And you're the man with the withered arm. Oh, man. Well, there went that. Because you're expecting Jesus, who is a rabbi, and you're surrounded by all these other rabbis, but Jesus, who keeps the law, to say, yeah, you're going to have to come back tomorrow. That's what you're expecting him to say. Hello? Hello. And he says, if one of you have a sheep, and it falls into a pit on the Sabbath day, wouldn't you lift it out? Yeah. How much more is a man than a sheep? Stretch forth thine hand. Yeah. And he stretched it forth and it was whole like the other. Mm -hmm. That's the Jesus you serve. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's the Savior you serve. Yes. He's not looking for rules and regulations to bind you. He's looking for opportunities to bless you. Amen. There's another place in the scripture where he said, My father works on the Sabbath and so do I. Yes. Wow. He wasn't running around doing everything on Sabbath, but if there was things that needed to be done to bring the Father glory, he was doing it. Hey. Saints, you need to take a day of rest and refreshing and honor the Word. Yeah. Honor the Lord. Amen. Give God glory. Amen. But if there's things that need to be done for the glory of the Father, then it's okay to do them. Jesus ministered to the manifold needs of people through his compassion and his love. As Christians, the love of Christ should be ministered through our hearts, our words, and our lives. Amen. Luke 10, 17 through 20, and the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. Mm -hmm. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not, 
that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. You pray for somebody and God heals them and you get excited. He's saying that's not the thing you should be excited about. I mean, the man with the withered arm is excited. But you should be excited that your name is written in the book of life. Amen. See, sometimes we get our focus distracting us from the things that we need to focus on. Amen? Amen. Number one, speak breakthrough. Number two, do God's will. Mm. You, you, you remember the, the phrase that was moving through for a long time, WWJD, what would Jesus do? Mm -hmm. I wonder if we started every day with, if Jesus would do this, if Jesus would go there, if Jesus would say that, oh. if Jesus would pray that. All right. All right. And then the flip side to that, well, Jesus would do that. Uh -huh. Oh, Jesus would say that. <laughs> Jesus would go there. Uh -huh. <laughs> Maybe we'd go different places and say different things. And maybe we'd not go some places and not say some things. <laughs> how, how do we realign our life with God's will? If we're going to do what God wants to do, if our life is going to have purpose, we have to be doing the Father's will and not our will. Remember what Jesus prayed? Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Yes. That's when he's talking to the Father and telling his dad he really doesn't want to go to Calvary. He wanted you in heaven... But he didn't want to die. All right, preacher. At least not that way. Hello? Hello? He knew what was coming. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Whew. Okay, Dad. In fact, I think it says in, in, in this is, he said, this is why I came into the world. <laughs> this is why I came into the world. That's a pretty powerful statement. Amen. He knew why he was here. <laughs> Matthew 12, 15, But when Jesus knew it, he withdrew himself from this, and great multitudes followed him, and he healed them all. They're plotting and scheming against Jesus because he healed the man. The Bible says they sought to destroy him. Man, that's good, Christians. <laughs> We're going to kill that guy. That's what they were planning. There were several places that because of what Jesus did, they, they cooked up a little scheme. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. One time he was ministering, he was up on a high cliff. And the Bible said they grabbed him and they were going to throw him off the cliff. And the Bible says that Jesus walked through the midst of them. Yes. Yep. You see, when you're doing what God wants you to do, the plots and tricks and traps of the enemy will not stop you. Right. But you better right. know that you're doing what God wants you to do and you're not doing what you want to do. Right. There's a difference, amen? amen? The Bible says when he knew that they were plotting to destroy him, he withdrew himself from thence, and great multitudes followed him, and he healed them all. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Amen. I don't know how many peoples in great multitudes... There's a couple places in Scripture where it says there was a multitude of 5,000 plus women and children. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of people. This says great multitudes with an S. I, I don't know how many thousands of people there are. But how many times do we get together and there's somebody in our midst that has a physical need? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Imagine in thousands. In thousands of thousands. Ooh. And he healed them all. Oh. Wow. Wow. Jesus didn't just heal the man with the withered hand on the Sabbath. He also healed the multitudes that followed him. <laughs> Boy, that must have made the, the Pharisees upset. You know they had word of it. Yeah. Not only did the man with the withered arm get healed, but when he withdrew himself and the multitudes followed, he healed them all. That was still Sabbath. Mm. Wow! Mm. Wow! He's busy doing what the Father wants and not what the world wants. All right. mm -hmm. yeah. The first miracle Jesus did was turn water into wine. John 2, 11. This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory and his disciples believed on him. Uh -huh. See, they were just following knowing that there was something different about him and when that happened, 
happened, that was the thing that cinched it up for them, for most of them. It is him. It is the Messiah. Only the Messiah could do this. Saints, you too have come to a place where you know that he touched you in a way that no one could but the Savior. And that's what cinched it up for you. What did he do? And who are you telling about what he did? When Jesus walked on the water, what a, what a sight. What an event that was. Matthew 14, 25 through 27, in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went under them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. All right. Even when Jesus does something that your mind says, That can't happen. Jesus says, It's me. All right. Don't be afraid. It's me. When he saves a soul, it's Jesus. When he heals a body, it's Jesus. Amen. Amen. Just because we don't understand something doesn't mean we should be afraid of it or doubt it. We need to trust God, believe his word, praise his name. Amen? Mm -hmm. Everything Jesus did was done in love, and it was done to bring glory to the Father. And because of that, we can trust God. We can believe his word and praise his name. Mark eleven twenty two. 22, And Jesus answering saith unto them, Have faith in God. Hmm. Be good if we have a little more faith in God. Amen. Amen. Just a little more faith in God. See, God still responds to active faith today, saints. Yes, he does. And active faith still brings answers to prayer when we believe God for what he said. But if Jesus said have faith in God, then maybe it's important that we have faith in God. <laughs> Amen. 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 People have a lot of faith in their banker. All right, a lot of faith in their doctor. A lot of faith in their auto mechanic. All right. Have faith in God? I don't even believe there is one. Uh -oh. Lord have mercy. Oh, yes. No wonder Jesus is getting us to turn our attention from the things of this world to the things and to the one who is holy. John 2. Amen. 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 Number one, speak breakthrough. Number two, do God's will. Number three, use your authority. Saints, you were created with purpose. Yeah. The purpose of doing God's will, the purpose of speaking, the breakthrough, the answer, the deliverance. You can't heal anybody. God does the healing. You can't save anybody. God does the saving. Amen. But you need to speak what God said. Mm -hmm. You need to do what God wants you to do. Yes. Matthew 12, 22. Then was brought unto him one possessed with the devil. When was the one with the devil brought unto him? After he heals all the multitude. Mm -hmm. so, and he healed them all. And then it says... Then was brought to him one possessed with the devil, blind and dumb. And he healed him. Insomuch that the blind and dumb both spake and saw. Yes. The man was not blind and dumb because of a physical infirmity. A devil that possessed him had made him blind and mute. Mm. Mm. See, when the devil gets inside of you, uh -huh. or someone else, there's a lot of things those devils do. Mm -hmm. It's not just always mental. Hello? Mm -hmm. There are physical infirmities that happen quite often because of being a possession. <laughs> All right. You know, when a police officer steps out in front of traffic and he holds up his hand, Traffic does not stop because the police officer has so much power. You know what causes the traffic to stop? Authority. Authority stops the traffic. Jesus gave his disciples power 
and authority. Yes. Mm. Hello. Mm. Hello. Mm. Jesus used his authority to command the devils to go. <laughs> and then he gave us authority over devils. Luke 9, 1, then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority yes. over all devils and to cure diseases. You've been given power and authority over the works of the enemy. All right. Maybe if we used our authority, we'd do more for the glory of God. Amen. You say, well, I don't really know if I can cast out a devil. You can't. You have no power to cast out devils. You have authority to command devils to go. I can't stop cars. I don't have the power. Hello? I can't cast out devils. I don't have the power. But I have the authority to command devils to go. I wonder if sometimes we get things in the right perspective if we do more for the Lord. Amen? The devil was busy in Jesus' day. And saints, the devil is busy today. Many people were possessed with devils then, and there are many people that are possessed with devils now. But Jesus cast out devils. He cast out evil spirits with his word. And this isn't even in the outline, but I need to share this with you today. Jesus didn't touch people and lay hands on people that were demon-possessed. He spoke to the spirits. He spoke to the devils. He commanded them to go. When you're dealing with demons and devils, you speak the word. Amen? Matthew 8, 16. When the evil was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirits with his word. And healed all that were sick. Hmm. That kind of makes me think that there's nothing impossible to go. <laughs> kind of makes me think that God wants us healed and well and in our right mind and not possessed of devils, but instead filled with God's spirit. Yes. Could it be that demon possession is the counterfeit of the spirit in filling? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. yeah. So how do we get so many people filled with demons and devils? playing around with things they have no business. There are a lot of different things that cause demon possession, and that's a six-month series. Mm -hmm. Not going there. Mm -mm. Not today. You need to know that you have authority over demons and devils. That's right. If you're walking with Christ. That's right. If you're born again. Yes. If you're spirit-filled. Amen. And many infirmities are caused by evil spirits, so we need to use the word of God to overcome the devil. Yeah. I read a passage in Matthew 8, I want to read 5 through 13, verses 5 through 13. And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him, and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus saith unto him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. What a response for the centurion to make. People were constantly running to Jesus to get a hold of Jesus, to get Jesus to go where the problem was. But this centurion, when Jesus says, I will go and heal him, he says, oh no, 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 no. For I'm a man under authority having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, go, and he goeth. And to another, come, and he cometh. And to my servant, do this, and he doeth it. Jesus, you don't need to come to my house. I know how authority works. If I tell this guy, go do such and such, he does it. I don't even have to check up on him. Because he knows my authority. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. Here's a Gentile that gets it. Mm -hmm. What's wrong with you guys? He understands authority. Why don't you understand authority? 
And I say to you that many shall come from the east and west and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way, and as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed in the self-same hour. See, Jesus simply spoke, and by his authority, the servant was healed. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. You have authority to speak. Yes. That's why we can pray here, and in China, someone can receive healing. Amen. Hello. Mm -hmm. Aren't you glad we don't have to get on an airplane? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. Mm -hmm. Utilize your authority in Christ, saints. Walk in victory over the devil. 1 John 4, 4, your God will children have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen. The message of the gospel is one of changed lives, of transformed hearts. 1 Corinthians 10, 13, there are no temptation taking you, but such as is common to man, but God is faithful. Will not suffer to be tempted above that you are able to will with the temptation, also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. There is a way out. You are not bound by the trap the devil sets for you. That's right. There is a way of escape through Jesus Christ. There is always an exit door through Jesus Christ. Yes. Romans 8, 37, they in all these things. We are more than conquerors than him that loved us. We're not victorious over a few things. Most things. <laughs> Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Wow! wonder if we started acting like conquerors, how we'd live. Right, amen. We started walking and talking like we're children of the Most High, with authority over the things of this world, how we would live. Hmm? Hmm? That's just me thinking out loud. Hmm? wonder how we would live. Oh, amen. Through his actions while on earth, Jesus clearly demonstrated the message he had brought from his Father. It's called a message of love, a message of hope, a message of promise, a message of forgiveness, a message of grace. Jesus came to save the lost from sin, and salvation includes healing and manifold blessings for God's people. God's word is more powerful than any devil or evil spirit. Mm -hmm. God's word is more powerful than any sickness or disease. Mm -hmm. God's word is more powerful than any lie the devil tells. Say amen. amen. God's word is more powerful than any situation someone will ever face. Whenever we see great revival, we see great supernatural works manifest by the spirit of God. When you ask God for miracles, God sends a revival. When you ask God for revival, he sends miracles. Because the two go hand in hand. Amen. Isaiah 25, 7 through 8, and he will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all people and the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death in victory and the Lord God will wipe away tears from off all faces and the rebuke of his people shall he take away from off all the earth for the Lord has spoken it. Yeah. If, if you get a chance meditate on that a little bit today and a little bit this week did you see how God said I'm, I'm going I'm to get rid of the covering I'm going to get rid of the veil I'm going to get rid of the thing that is covering over the eyes of my people and stopping them from doing and saying what they're supposed to be doing and saying. <sighs> he will swallow up death in victory. And the Lord God will wipe away all tears from off all faces. Yes. <laughs> wow. 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 Wait. Mm -hmm. Man, that's good. I wonder what covering he wants to pull off of you. What shroud of darkness he wants to pull off of you? Yeah. What thing of bondage the devil has put on you he wants to pull off of you? Yes. Hmm. It says all people from all, all the earth. 
Wow. That's us. Anybody in prayer this morning? Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. First off, those who may know my name and those who may not know my name, I'm Sean Craig. I'm in the prayer family Amen. for this week. So uh, I just want to say thank you for praying for me. Amen. And I want to say thank you for the guys praying for you for the rest of the week. I don't really need any prayer, but I need prayer all the time. We well, all need prayer all the time. Amen. We all need prayer. Amen. That's right. Father, we all need prayer. My brother is faithfulness, Father. I thank you for what you're doing and mm -hmm. about to do in his life, Father. I ask you to just unfold favor and direction, Father, as he walks in obedience with you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. All right. Father, I just thank you for your love and your answer, Father. You see the Steps that are taken, Father, to be mm. obedient. So, Father, I ask that you bless, mm. give the words, the opportunity, open the doors, Father. Mm. And, Father, pull off the shroud from off the people that they might see yes. your mighty hand. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Ooh, glory, glory. Amen. Will you stand with these saints? Mm. Prompted. Some of you have some unspoken prayer requests. Slip up your hand. Mm -hmm. Father, you see the needs that are represented by those that have lifted their hand. Father, I ask that right now you would meet that need, those needs, completely. Father, I ask that you would move in hearts and lives and circumstances, Father, revealing your glory and your love and your answer. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Father, I thank you for today. I thank you for your goodness. I thank you for your spirit. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your favor, Father, toward us. Father, I ask that you would bless and direct and encourage. Father, that our steps would go, our feet would go where you want them to go. Father, that we would do the things that you want us to do. And we would move through this week. If you have your son, Terry with the assurance that we were created with purpose to do your will, O oh God. Go with us and bless us. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. Hey, friends, say, shake hands, bless one another. Amen.